Well, I guess straight up, if you gave me a million dollars, I'd put a third of that in a fund that I'm involved in managing called Dynamic Markets Fund, which is like an asset allocation fund that invests globally um, in relatively low cost instruments like ETFs and futures. Um, and I think in this environment, asset allocation is the key thing to get right. So I'd allocate a third of that money to that fund. And the rest I would, uh, I'm always going to get the percentages wrong here, but um, I still like the European and Japanese and Chinese share markets globally. Um, so I'd allocate a chunk of money internationally into those markets. Um, and yeah, probably about a third of it in that direction. Um, I'd put and I'd, I'd take the remaining third and I'd split it half between Australian shares focused on stocks offering good sustainable dividends and I'd put the other um, remainder um, probably into a commercial property fund because I think that in this environment um, unlisted commercial property will continue to do well um, largely on the back of that search for yield I mentioned earlier. Um, and no room for cash in there? No, I wouldn't bother with cash. With the <laughs> There's always a role for cash um, because you need it day to day. Um, um, but right now I've got enough in cash to cover my day to day needs. Um, the trouble with cash is that the yield is just so low. Um, you know, bank deposit rates averaging around 2.5% might even go a little bit lower if I'm right on the cash rate next year. Um, so very hard to get excited about cash. And I guess at the end of the day, I still sort of see myself as having a fair way to go to retirement and therefore I'm not as worried about short term fluctuations in markets and hopefully that 30% that, that one third I have allocated to the dynamic markets fund will cover me on that front anyway because if our indicators are warning of a significant correction or fall in markets then we'll reduce the exposure to, to growth assets in, in that fund. So that will sort of cover that for me but I think at the end of the day the cash return is, is horrible at the moment so why bother with it? Unless you have to. You've talked about um, a, a decent portion of that money going offshore. Is, is that because you have a view that the Aussie dollar goes low? I think the Aussie dollar will go lower. Um, I see the Aussie dollar going to 60 cents. Um, I think at the end of the day, the Aussie economy has done remarkably well. You know, <laughs> I've been a relative optimist on Australia that we wouldn't have the recession that uh, foreign commentators keep telling us will happen. Um, they say it's inevitable. Well, it hasn't happened. Um, the reality is that the economy has rebalanced and we found sources of growth that a lot of people a few years ago simply thought wouldn't be there, but they are there. The, the fall in interest rates, the fall in the Aussie dollar certainly helped the economy, but we still need some more help. The mining downturn, mining investment downturn still has further to go, maybe another couple of years. And then environment, we need to keep demand up. And I think in that, as a result, the Aussie, Aussie dollar will, will head lower, um, probably to around 60 cents um, as interest rate differential in favour of Australia narrows as the Fed hikes, the RBA potentially cuts, and also as commodity prices remain low. Um, so yes, having money overseas is partly in response to my view the Aussie dollar would go down. But also, I, th I think there's good value in markets overseas. If I look at the European shares, um, on our estimates, they're about two standard deviations cheap, which is roughly about 20% undervalued, compared to the US market, which on our measures is less than 10% cheap. Um, and on some other measures, the US market looks expensive. So favourite Europe, similar story in Japan. You're also getting monetary easing in those two regions or countries. And finally, China. China is a messy one, certainly a messy one over last year. Um, but I think there's good value to be found in, in certain Chinese shares or share markets, particularly Chinese shares listed in Hong Kong, which are trading on price to earnings multiples of less than eight times. Um, that's, that's, I think, good long term value to me. So. So that's basically why I'm overseas. Pockets of value there at certain parts of the world, but also the fall in the value of the Aussie dollar.